He achieved pitcher's magic numbers with 314 wins and 3,534 strikeouts. Galo was outstanding. 20 game winner five times with a lifetime ERA of 3.10. Galo was a great competitor, very tough man. Every time he got to the mound, he meant business. Playing mind games with hitters through an array of rituals on the mound was part of his arsenal. You've got to know he's going to get the super sinker. The set, here it comes. The sinker swung on and missed. Reggie is human. With his little funny pitch he had, you know, the spitter that made him, he was very tough. I don't think he ever threw a spitball in his life, but he made them think that he was. He goes to the underside of the bill of the cap. He'll go down the right side of his face. If I'm pitching against Pete Rhodes or somebody the next day, I might go out and shake hands with him. I got grease all over my hands. Gato knew whatever while that you have, you use that to get the hitter out. Right, He gets me to know it. I don't want to say what Gaylord had. <laughs> Gaylord Perry began his career as a San Francisco Giants starter and reliever in 1962. After two lackluster seasons, he got an idea that would forever redefine his career. It goes back to watching Don Drysdale pitch. My hitters would come back and they'd say, he got it on his head today, no, this is on his belt today. So I said, if my hitters worry about that guy out there, then I should do something. So the next game I go out there, I'm touching my hat everywhere. I win a couple of games like that in a row, and now the opposing hitters are saying he's putting something on the ball. And all I was doing was playing my hat. Well, most of the time anyway. Gaylord did eventually admit to occasionally doctoring the ball, a practice he began in earnest during a 23-inning game versus the Mets in 1964. Somebody had ground ball to him, threw it back to me first base, and I threw the ball back to him, the ball moved, and he looked at me, he laughed. That was the beginning of the spirit that day. The combination of psychology and an occasional stretch of the rules helped transform Perry. A smiling Gaylord Perry walking off the mound after a win, he soon became a full-time starter, and beginning in 1966, a year in which he went 21-8, and eight, he began to exhibit workhorse-type stamina. He threw very hard, and he had pretty decent stuff, but the spitter set him apart from most everybody else for the simple reason that he could control it better than just about anybody. A lot of people threw it, but very few people threw it as well as Gaylord. From 1966 to 71 with the Giants, he averaged over 295 innings per year and started a streak of 15 or more wins that ran for 13 straight seasons. The Iron Man of the League, Perry completed 23 games in 1970. When it got to the real tough games or against the premier pitchers, Gaylord wanted the baseball, and I think that was a testament to why he was so successful in both leagues. Perry landed in the American League prior to the 72 season when he was traded to the Cleveland Indians. I started out right out of high school with the Giants. So the day that I got traded to Cleveland, I cried. We had a home in California, kids in school, so it was a very big change for us. But despite that big change, Gaylord had astonishing success in 1972. He led the American League with 24 wins and 29 complete games. Cy Young winning season also featured a 1.92 ERA over 342 and two thirds innings. I started 40 games that year and had 40 decisions, so that was my best year. Six years later, while turning 40, Gaylord went 21 and six for the San Diego Padres. He won his second Cy Young award with the help of another future Hall of Famer. I had a guy in the bullpen called Raleigh Fingers. I pitched seven innings, I wouldn't go back out there because he already warned me, if you got a one or two run lead out to seven, he's coming to the mound. At the time, Gaylord was the only pitcher in history to win the Cy Young Award in both leagues. Gaylord was a good pitcher. You have to give him credit. He won 300 games, so he must have beat somebody. Everybody on their feet here at the Kingdom. Gaylord Perry, 43 years, eight months old, from Williamson, North Carolina. One out away from 300. The 2 1 pitch to Randolph. Swung on, ground ball to Cruz. This should do it. He's got it. It's over. And Gaylord Perry becomes the 15th man in baseball history to win 300 games. My, oh, my. 1991 was Gaylord's third year on the Hall of Fame ballot, and despite the debate surrounding Perry's special pitch, he was inducted by the Baseball Writers of America with over 77% of the vote. I would just like for all y'all to know today 
It was one of the greatest days of my life. I was getting ready to give him a speech, and I looked around before I started talking, and it was a club that I belong to now. Ted Williams, DiMaggio, Whitey Ford, Yogi, Stan the Man, Mays, McCovey, Marichal. <laughs> it was awesome. I, I just thought right there, I must have done something right.